Okay, we're rumbling on this beautiful uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, episode 183, sponsored by Freeze Pipe. Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab rigs, and more. If you can smoke it, Freeze Pipe makes it. The Cannabis Christmas is here, and from April 1st to April 20th, Freeze Pipe has their biggest sale of the year running to celebrate 420. The secret is freezable glycerin coils that are on each piece. Pop one of the glycerin chambers in the freezer for one hour, and when the smoke passes through this icy chamber, it instantly cooled by over 300 degrees. No more chest or throat burn. The result is bigger, smoother hits without the intense coughing. Glycerin is a fatty gel commonly found in food and sweeteners. It freezes quicker than water and stays frozen longer. It's like putting ice in your bong, but on steroids. Use code TIMBOSHUG, capital T-I-M-B-O-S-U-G, for 10% off the entire order. Freeze pipe. Great shit. Good shit. If I'm ever puffing a bong, I'm doing the freeze pipe. A fresh one straight to the, straight to the fucking guzzler. So, uh, we're here with my brother, Matt, and then Sean's dad, Dano. Daniel. Daniel. Dano. Yep, Dano. <coughs> Fucking good to have you. So, Dan's been a former cop for how many years were you cop? 20. You, you Talk might, right into that mic there, sir. Yeah. I mean, you, you guys can move it around, too. Whoever's talking is 20. 20 years. 20 years, correct. 20 years a cop. And then, Matt, you've been a firefighter for how many years now? Almost 20. Holy. If, um... We're going to really have to get that mic figured out. Yeah, but uh, um, get comfortable. Al- almost 20 years, too? Yeah. Just under it. Uh, June 1st will be 20 years. And, oh. now, and now you'll be able to uh, retire within when? June 1st. June 1st, yeah. you can just retire. Damn. Yeah. That's sweet. That so is. both you guys in Helena, I mean, is the Mary J still pretty frowned upon in Montana? Or is it getting loosening up a bit? It's loosening up quite a bit. Is I mean, it? their sales are just record sales for the last couple of months. Like February beat January, March beat February. Uh-huh. The sales are insane. Damn, that's crazy. Right. Is it recreational or just a card? Recreational. Oh wow! Just recently opened just, up yeah. to be re- recreational. So is it pretty frowned upon in the in, in say like the uh, law enforcement and even the firefighters, or is it just kind of not talked about, or is it just like? Uh, I anymore awkward stage i would say it's fairly frowned upon still like within yeah. the city agencies i mean within my profession there's yeah. the cops that will never like marijuana and then there's the ones that understand it and get it yeah. <clears throat> so probably with the people they deal with they're just like is it is it like druggies that they deal with and they they associate that with marijuana be like god it just fucking fries your brain yeah i think that's getting changed quite a bit is I think, it yeah I, I think they're understanding the it used math. to be dope was everything. Dope was meth, coke, marijuana, mm-hmm. and everything. Gateway. And now they're yeah. And now they're separating marijuana from dope. Yeah. And dope meaning more meth and. Uh, yeah. Well, that's good. At least Montana is loosening up about the rules and stuff, and not getting super crazy. Slow and steady. But you're retired now, right, Dano? Correct. Kind of. So when are you going to take your first rip with Sugar Shane? <laughs> <laughs> I puffed on one the other day for a video, but I didn't. Inhale. inhale. Oh. <laughs> Did you actually? Though? I sent you the video, right, Tim? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to watch oh, the video. It's right. a good little vid. What's just wor- I was just working that? out. <laughs> now yeah. what, Matt? <laughs> no, no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Look at my arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, he uh, had a. He handed me a little. Uh, I was hitting the. Mi- oh shoot! Yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, same, same, it was good. Same, that was good. Uh, yeah, that is good. Um, I mean, fucking woke up having a great morning mariah rolls in and says oh it looks like you owe 33 grand in taxes this year and i go holy fuck dude seriously seriously great way to start the morning you just gotta get like you just give that cheddar away and who who deals with it well bud biden and then Shig Shane, he talk. makes me feel better with you. What'd you have to put in? Well, my mom said around 160, but I'm so stoic. Doesn't even pay Are you me. really? I do it. I do it every three months. I put in a chunk of change, at what I like an estimate of what I'm gonna owe at the end of the year. Uh huh. So I do it every three months. So like I didn't even like by the end of the year, I'd already paid it off. Oh, okay. Okay. You dial it down because I thought I was doing that too, but then it was just way more than I expected. But with these whole, all these write offs and shit, there's got to be different ways for small businesses and different, different loopholes and different write offs. Like, how do these contractors that buy new trucks every single year, how do they write those off? And how, like, all these fucking tricks that I have no clue about. 
Yeah. He's a great accountant. There's yeah. no doubt about it. I don't. I just. And I, what's a great accountant? One that goes by the books, or one that's kind of goes by the books but knows a little loopholes, Brian. Knows a little loopholes. Yeah. I say just don't even pay it. Stack that cheddar, and five years run away with as much cash as you can. God, that would be my advice to someone young dude. making money, huh? like, like Joe Riggs. Who? Oh God! I mean, they pay off their house, and then the IRS comes says we need four hundred grand right now, or we're taking all your shit. Oh. I know that's, that's if crazy. you pay, pay them monthly or quarterly, you're just letting the government borrow your money. So if you wait till the end of the year to pay them that 30 grand, they're not borrowing your money all year. You know what I mean? So what is that? What do you mean? So like Sean pays every quarter. Yep. The government borrows that money. They invest that money. They get to use that money. If you're not giving it to them every quarter and only paying them at the end of the year, then they don't get to borrow on your money. So what's the, what's the, I mean, so it's, is it bad that they're borrowing on the money? No, well, it's up to you. I mean, if you want to let the government borrow your money, you could invest it, right? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Your percentage of money, you could have twenty grand making you, I don't know, ten percent in an account, opposed to the government if the money is yeah. sitting there. You know. Oh, okay. Um, you guys pull that a little bit closer, just just when you talk, just kind of in the middle, you guys, and maybe stretch it out. You're trying to get us to kiss, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cop, yeah. cop fireman. Kiss. Yeah, but fucking dude. I mean, welcome, dude. Yeah, fuck the taxes, but you just got to do it, I guess. Dude, that's where stoicism comes in, bud. I mean, it's my <sighs> second year paying like a good chunk, and it's just holy shitter. I remember uh, uh, my mom told me a couple years ago I owed a hundred thousand, and I had a literally write a hundred thousand dollar check to the IRS. That stung for about a day though, and then you'll wake up tomorrow and it'll be like whatever. It's but like, I had to go on a run, did like a cold plunge, had to do like a, some serious mental. Therapy. I was like, really? That's going there? It trips you. Fuck my, the fuck out. My road. Dude. Still, I can't even drive up it. And I'm paying a hundred thousand in taxes. It's Tim, fun oh, stuff. Tim, I think you just need to start having a bunch of kids. Does that help out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think. So. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Or just do what Michael does. Somehow get by. <laughs> just somehow get by. It's dude. a skill. He's got his I own think skill. it helps out quite a bit because you get deductions. You kids, know? yeah. You get kid deductions and child tax credits. Or you can just claim Jay and Dow. Um, <laughs> Matt. Try to throw on those headphones, and then you can hear kind of how you'll sound to the the audience when we talk. But, dude, fucking huge fights last night. They were crazy. You guys just watched them at your house? Yeah. Nice. Took a little dab ski. Did you? Uh, got our minds right. Little yeah. Dr. And, Dabsky. dude, holy smokes. I mean, which which fight should we talk about? Let's just talk about the main, the main card. The main three. Or McKinley Derns, Tisha Torres, and was a... Uh, McKenzie got the job. How, I, how sick was that when she pulled guard and damn near Camorga from the dude. full guard on the feet? I love my dad. Like, Joe Rogan's like, could pull, she could pull guard here. And then my dad's like, Joe's never right. Like, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. And then, like, the next round, she pulled guard. I'm like, really, dad? He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He loves having his opinions, though. I Very mean, strong yeah, opinions. I mean, but, dude, if she would have tapped her from that, that would have been fucking That was so impressive sick. she didn't. That Tisha Torres, I mean, even then she went to a knee bar and then she went to a toe hold. She, like... Very, it was impressive. She didn't get subbed. Five one, that little chick was five. There's feet no way. One. There's no way she's five. You one. think she's, she's five f- foot? Yeah. Danny's five zero. I bet she deadlifts like three hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah she probably. She legs. was stout. She was yeah. stout. And then uh, she got the job. The done fight done. after that, Gilbert Burns Chamayev. <sighs> Dude, Chamayev was. I mean, everyone counted out Gilbert Burns. Like he's just gonna kill him. He's just gonna kill him. It's like. Dude, I don't know if he's just going to fucking kill him. Like, Gilbert oh. is elite as fuck. It was crazy seeing Hosma grab him in the first round, though, and just drag him to the ground like he did. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. That was like, you don't see Gilbert, you don't see that happen. I thought Gilbert might have edged it out and won that. I thought so, too. I thought it would kind of go either way. But the fact that, I mean, the judges just judge on different shit. Chemayev was pushing him back yeah. the whole time, pushing him back. And they, they count cage control. Yeah. But, dude. I mean, I wonder if Shemaya. Well, if they I wonder, count I wonder, cage control, didn't Jan beat Peter or Jan beat Sterling? I would think so. I mean, yeah, same I mean, judges. Yeah, for sure. We'll talk about Shemaya though. But Shemaya, dude, I wonder if that was eye-opening for him, just being like, well, maybe I'm not an invincible. Like, holy fuck! Like these top elite guys, because you watch that fight and then and then picture him versus Kamaro. Who would you pick? Yeah, I mean, even still, like that fight comes out, I think the odds are pretty close. You think? Yeah. I bet you, I bet you, yeah, I bet they probably fucking are, dude. I bet they are. I mean, but they're talking about Colby and Chemayev next. I wonder if Colby watched that and thought, oh, okay, I can, I'll take him out. Or he's like, God, he's still just, he's massive. Did he do the towel trick? 
I seen that on I didn't see. Stuff. I didn't see the way. I keep asking everyone. They're like, I didn't see it either. So I'm like, maybe I made that up. Or I just thought he did the towel to DC and lost like five pounds like that. Yeah. He's massive. I bet Colby looks at that fight and thinks. Beatable. He's beatable because it's going to turn into a striking match. Yeah. But I feel like Gilbert's even bigger than Colby and Hazmat looked huge. He did. He's just fucking massive as fuck, Six dude. three. A little bit shorter than me. Uh, and then uh, Peter Aljo. You called it. Dude, I had a we I had a feeling I'm like everyone's acting like Aljo kind of sucks. Everyone's acting like Aljo's not as good as he really is. And I was like, Aljo's gonna come out with a different game plan, not gas out, because he was winning when he was not gassed. Like he was doing really well. And I, I just felt like Aljo was people weren't respecting him respecting his skills enough, dude. But um, I'd like to see the judges scorecard to see if they uh, scored any of those ten eight. Yeah, those rounds yeah. that they took the back because that obviously would change the fight completely. Yeah, hundred percent. Jan's takedown defense, considering he, I mean, other than the two times that he got his back taken, is so elite. His takedown defense. Oh, it's just fucking hips, gnarly. Head on the or uh, hand on the head. He, he's got sick takedown defense, but he fought so emotional from the beginning of the did? fight. Oh, dude, so emotional. Those looping punches. He's trying to kill him. He doesn't punch. He doesn't. That was a. He fought super emotional, and I should have been in his corner and told him, "Yo, Peter, settle down, bud." So I'll take that out. That was my fault. Mm-hmm. But it was impressive. Sterling's mindset going into that fight, after considering what had already happened mm-hmm. to him in the previous fight, like got manhandled in a like at, towards the end of the round, he was getting manhandled. Oh, or, he's getting broke too. To the, at the end of the fight, for him to go in with that mindset of not letting that affect him was super impressive. I think uh, showed championship mindset for sure. I mean, he's fucking elite, dude. Even all yep. all the embeds, all the countdowns, you see the way these these guys come in and they're acting like champions. They're they're just so fucking just confident. I mean, and dude, his back takes those were fucking so sick back takes. Do not let that motherfucker get a body triangle on you, dude. It was impressive. Peter didn't get choked. It was super impressive. How early it was and how tight that body triangle was on his guts. But that's the thing. His corners was telling him like. Don't give up your back so easy. I know it's easier said than done because you want to get up right away. Yeah. But, I mean, someone like you will be able to play guard a little bit and yeah. have and threaten them from your guard and not just automatically get the fuck yeah. up. Well, the first back take, he they got in like a scrambly position, and he kind of went for an, to get an underhook. He wasn't necessarily giving up his back, with, but then Aljo just, like, mounted him, just jumped, mounted him, kind of had to give up his back so he didn't get finished in mount. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the second time he did give up his back to try to get up and got it taken. But yeah, that yeah, you're right. So what do they do next? Do they do the trilogy or do they do? I think TJ? Aljo TJ. I think that's a sick fight. That bantamweight division is the best division in the UFC right now, hands down. The most, Easily most the most exciting fights. If you want to play mix it all around, the most exciting fights bantamweight division right now. A hundred percent, I think so too. We got to talk about the 44 year old guy. Oh, Al- that was Olenek. insane. Scar- I didn't watch it. Olenek oh. scarf hold that the guy. He not from mount, did he? No, scar- from side control, like like the scarf. Oh, like hold. a bully choke. <laughs> yeah, I guess <laughs> I didn't see him, but I guess backstage the guy was like, "Well, how would you do that?" And they were all show. He was all showing him backstage, but that's not something you could go teach someone and they can just do. That's a weird strength squeeze. Yeah, you've got a, a like a, a, he's been doing it for. He has sixty MMA fights or something. Dude, and and someone as strong as him, as someone. Someone slaps that bully choke on you. You have to react before it sets up because as soon as they sink it in, it's hard to get out of, dude. Ooh. Jamie Varner used to do that really well. Fucking bully choke, pop your fucking head off. But dude, that guy's forty four. And how many fights does he have? I think they said sixty. Sixty. Imagine plus. how strong that old dog's grip is. Oh, hit chest. The guy's big, and his opponent was in the corner puking right afterwards. It was in the first round. <sighs> oh, fuck. his opponent I, I, I was I in the corner that puking. I did too. That's how all of his fights go. Just like weird. Just he just like. Marches forward, throws bomb, yeah. and tries to grab someone. Uh, zombie versus Volk. I didn't watch. I left. Did you really? Yeah. I was getting late. It was 1030. I had a feeling. Because uh, you kept saying, I don't know. He's got a chance. So you, so you kind of made me start feeling like that. But uh-huh. like before you said that, I'm like, Volk's going to smoke him, dude. He's so good. I mean, as soon as Zombie kind of walked out, and the, I'm like, Ugh, Volk, he's a motherfucker. Who's going to beat that dude at 45? I don't see I, anyone beat I don't that see, dude. He's so goddamn durable. <clears throat> he doesn't load up his punches. He's so fucking fast. Dude, Volk versus Habib at 55. Volk's not a small 45er thickness-wise. No. I bet he walks around big. I mean, what about Volk versus like Charles Oliveira? Oh, 
Any Volk versus anybody at 55 or 45, God, he, I could see him being a favorite. He's so, so good. Yeah, he's fucking scary as fuck. And just his confidence about him, too. And the fact I that... I bet Henry quits calling him out now. Dude, <laughs> I was thinking about that fight. I was like, who... I'd slaughter Henry. He would, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to deny. I mean... Especially just, now. Like, yeah. Volk's in it. Yeah, yeah. And Henry's got a kid. He's fucking heavy. Uh, that was sweet, though. I, I don't know who the fuck would be next for Volk. Who in that? Who's that? I'm going to pull that division up, actually. It'd have quick. to be uh, maybe a, a Yair... Dude, or, I don't. What yeah. about Zabit? Zabit, he's has he even fought? They they booked him again. He hasn't fought since 2019 because of some. Uh, I don't know if it was COVID or what. No, he uh, he had some kind of medical issues. Hey Jay, could you pull up while Sean's looking this up? The Steelers QB getting hit by the. Oh yeah, my dad never talked about that. On a. The Steelers QB getting hit on the freeway and dying. I think it just happened two days ago. Bryce Mitchell's ranked nine, Giga's eight, Josh Emmett's seven, Arnold Allen six. Oh wow, Arnold Allen's up there. I mean, high. dude, that whole division—he kind of looks like he runs through. A hundred percent, dude. That's that's crazy that he's that champion right now. That's just terrifying. Um. Yeah. Let's see here. So supposedly this. Uh, the, but so what happened? I didn't watch the fight. That 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 fight. Volk versus. Zombie. I mean. Volk was just piecing him the fuck up. He would, they were, Zombie was trying to do what Coach Eddie has, has him do, like stuttering with a jab, get him to pull out and then counter him. He was trying to do that the whole time, but they're kind of getting the read on that. And every time Zombie would throw, if he threw his left hand, his right hand was by his hip. If he threw his right hand, his left hand was by his hip. And, and Volkanovsky would slip. That's and how just, he hits He mitts. would just rip him, dude. That's how he hits mitts. He'd slip, blah, 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 and just piece uh, Zombie up. I felt bad. Zombie did. I mean, he just looked like he was just a little bit older and just a couple steps behind. Ooh. Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Dwayne Haskins died early Saturday morning after he was struck by a dump truck while he was walking on a South Florida highway. Well, on the highway. He was only 24 years old. He was attempting to cross the westbound lanes of Interstate 595 when there was an oncoming traffic. Miranda said an email statement. Blah, blah, blah. Oof. I don't know. I th- supposedly, supposedly he ran out of gas. And he was getting out, and then some big dump truck fucking smoked him on the highway. Oh, that's awful. I thought fucking there was a text brutal. message or something that came out after that that oh. he had sent. Did, oh. you, did you read that? Like oh, suicidal? Really? Yeah. I, I can't remember the whole article. I thought Sean was going to try to find it. but um, I mean, I mean, for your guys' fucking profession, you've probably seen some such crazy, gnarly shit. Oh. Is there any ones that like stick out that just, I mean, that are in your head that you think about on just random times that just come into your brain? Especially for, for your jobs, it's probably easy putting your lives into perspective when you have to be around that shit constantly. I was telling Sean on the way here, and Matt, you probably responded to it. The guy that jumped off the bridge, that got his scrotum stuck on the oxygen tank. Oh, no, I didn't respond to that one. <laughs> The guy was quick decline, <laughs> mentally ill, and he was going to commit suicide. Jumps off the bridge, and was wanting to get hit by a car. The truck driver in Butte that was delivering oxygen tanks gets to Butte and goes out to his oxygen tank. So they're all sitting in the back of his truck, open faced, oh. and he goes to grab one. And there's a dude's scrotum in his pocket. That's it on this tank. And he's like, <sighs> "What the hell?" Oh. Gets back to Helena. There's an attempt to locate on somebody that hit a guy. What cops thought was the guy jumped off the bridge and then a car hit him and then just kept rolling. Uh-huh. This guy had no idea because he's driving a big truck. So he gets to Butte and he's got a scrotum on an oxygen tank. What do you mean the scrotum? His nuts. He went and nut landed sack. on top of the tank. Instead and he, of, so his nut sack was on the tank? I don't know if it was just all his nut sack, but it was his pocket and stuff. Obviously human flesh yeah. on the tip of an oxygen Oof. tank. Can you imagine oh. that guy? Like, what the hell? How did that get on an oxygen tank? <laughs> Not knowing that there was a wreck in hell. And a, he didn't yeah. know the guy jumped. So when he gets back, everybody's looking for a vehicle that might have hit a pedestrian, you know, jumping off the bridge. But I remember I one time you were telling me, Matt, about one uh, you pulled up to a, a car fire and the, the person's face was kind of like peeled off and, oh. their, and their eyes were still moving. No, it wasn't a car wreck. It was a young girl, a 17-year-old girl. But the car wasn't on fire. Oh, Wait, okay. no. There's something different. Maybe one you responded to, Matt. And their eyes were like Ooh. still moving around. I mean, He's I, like, I I'm t- just sure there's so much. Shit. I remember you told me about a helicopter. A guy was flying his solo helicopter, and his whole face and everything was just in the dash or whatever. Got it. It was, was a- indented in the side of the mountain. Oh. He was flying a plane and clipped a wing, and he got ejected through there. And that's just 
straight ejected right into a mountainside. Mm -hmm. I had to go sit up on it. And it was like a cartoon image. His body was just implanted into the mountainside. Like oh. his chest was like six or eight inches inside. Oh, Jesus. The so, worst ones are suicides. Shotguns to the yeah. head and stuff. Yeah. And you got to be first on the scene and see that shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. That's fucking insane. It's like a there's, Netflix there's series. A lot, of, a lot of stuff I just try not to think about. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just, and then especially with suicides, they may be the nastiest call, but a lot of times that person, they chose to do that to themselves. So, um, I feel real bad that they were in a place where they did that to themselves, but I think it's a lot of the calls that involve like little kids or something oh. that they didn't want to happen or something very traumatic. You know, those are the ones that kind of sure. tend to get to me a little bit. Yeah. I'm sure with that job, you almost just got to become almost like it just emotionless. You can't be attached to that kind of shit because you see it so much that you just got to be like, well, another dead guy. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I can't do that. I It's too emotional to do that stuff. Yeah. It's probably a skill to be able to do that, unattach it's, yourself it's, from those. It's very hard to try to. Ugh. You have to really control your, your thoughts and your mind while you're on scene because uh -huh. what you're, how you act can affect other people like that may be there and that are related to the person that had the traumatic event Ooh, happen to yeah. them. So you have to try to stay calm and be sympathetic and... Uh, but not be too emotional for yourself. You yeah. Know, you got to kind of CPR infants. That's the worst. Probably. Uh -huh. I don't like hear sure about that. Worst, that. Worst calls I've ever been on. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> like SIDS, that, that type of shit. Or suffocations. The one I can think of, heavier set lady was sleeping in a water bed with her infant breastfeeding. She fell asleep. Oh. When we got there, the baby was blue, obviously. And the paramedics, I think it was volunteer fire guys were doing, we call it sympathetic CPR. Just for the family, you know the child's dead, but they're doing it's. It is the worst. Little infant yeah. deaths are the worst for sure. Or drownings, you know, where little kids drown. Those are pretty awful. Oh fuck! Yeah, I can't imagine. I don't like talking about. But, that. Uh, I don't even like talking about it either. Yeah, <laughs> next. I, know. I don't know if anyone does, but but uh, you know what always trips me out, Dan, is how how kids can be so much different than their siblings, and they're raised by the same parents and the same lives, like. Absolutely. Doing the same shit, like Sean growing up. How was when did he start being just a little shithead? Like at what age? It's a good question. Three days, <laughs> three three days old. Was no. he a hard baby? No, not at all. Not at all. Not a hard baby at all. His energy level started getting pretty high, probably around eight or nine. Uh huh. Where he was an entertainer, obviously that yeah. shouldn't surprise anybody. But um, whenever we did family events or went to social events, Sean was the center of. Uh, Center attention. of attention. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that's probably where Sean and I kind of got sideways a little bit. I was the one that always happened to go, Sean, slow down. And yeah. Stop. <laughs> stop. But so, yeah, pretty young, pretty early. Uh -huh. But that's why we kept him busy in athletics. Yeah. I mean, it's probably just so, and... so tough for a parent, too, because you want, you want what's best for your kid because you love them. And you're trying to, like, hey, I want you to kind of. I want you to go this route, go this route to be successful. And they're just go, they're not fucking listening. They're just being little fucking shitheads. Yeah. And then comes Daniel. Yeah. Daniel was like the easiest kid in the entire world to raise. Just mm -hmm. super chill, super relaxed. So maybe I just got his energy and mine. Or maybe Dan, when he got Michelle pregnant, was drinking monsters <laughs> multiple times a day when he had you. <laughs> just a little fucking crackhead. <laughs> I was drinking Pepsi's, like 44-ounce Pepsi's. I was Speaking of, oh, him yeah. and Brandon got back, damn your black last night. My dad kept walking past Brandon and pouring more whiskey or whatever yeah. in his drink. Do you saw the videos of Brandon? He was hammered <laughs> last night. Hilarious. Just freestyling for Alana, like sitting this close to her, just like talking to her. Came up to me, he's like, dude, you're 5'11". That's fucking sick. Like, you're 5'11". <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. It was so... Funny. My dad was just roasting him on the short jokes. I started feeling bad, though. Every word out of your mouth was something about him being 5'3". Brandon's a good sport, though, isn't he? Very good. He's the so best. funny. Yeah. Yeah, he's a He character. was sitting on the couch with me, and his legs weren't even close to hitting the floor. Uh -huh. So I, was, I gave him a booster chair to sit next to us. He's a funny kid, though. Super yeah, he's funny. a funny little fucker. Um, so, even, so about at 16 years old, that's when Sean went to the kickboxing joint. And what did you think of him joining that kind of fight team? Were you like, oh, great? Or were you like... At least he's doing something. I well, I started hitting mitts. I think the I don't know what the first thing I did was. It was it boxing with Ray or was it no. Muay Thai with uh, 
It was boxing. We tried to go to the boxing center oh, in Billing or in Helena. That's right. With uh, the what's those guys' name? The Native American group. Yeah, they did was, not like the me. Caferos. Caferos. I walked yep. in there and was like, never had done anything, and they just didn't pay any attention to me. Like I didn't even, like they just didn't have anything really to do with me. I don't know if it's because I was white, which is weird, but I think that was. I mean, the, most boxing gyms you walk into, it, that's the vibe in there. Like, hey, you got to prove yourself. I yeah, mean, that's true. The fuck out of you. I talked to the owner. He just came up to me and I told him that Sean was interested. It's Caferos' dad. Yeah. He handed me an application and said, okay, go out and get 10 sponsors a month. That was a whole conversation. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and we walked out. And... But, Sean, yeah, that was when you didn't want to do organized sports anymore. Yeah, that was when I was kind of over the basketball. Well, you had, yeah, the grades and the basketball and football. I was like, that never, I wanted to play football so bad and start and be like the star, but I never got that opportunity. Same with basketball. So I was like, well, I'll just do a one-on-one sport where it's just just me. Yeah. I would tell you that your baseball is probably your number one sport. Really? That's when what you played shortstop. Said. I was oh good. Gosh. I was a stud. Him and Daniel, it was so fun. Shortstop, to play shortstop. like a bat, lefty or righty, I was a stud. Yeah. Damn. Still, Still didn't man. like listen to coaches. So MLB, you could do MLB. Right now, I feel like I could go hit off a pitcher. <laughs> Jack off a pitcher? <laughs> hit off a pitcher. Oh. Um, but then we started going to. Was did I start boxing with Ray right yeah. after that? Right after that. Yeah. It, that's kind of a cool story. He's a Native American guy in Helena. He's Golden Gloves. His son's Golden Gloves. Her daughter was Golden Gloves. Lived in a house way up in the mountains. Um, had f- nothing. He had a broken treadmill and a heavy bag. And he took Sean in. And within a couple of weeks, he said, you have no idea what this kid's potential is. Oh, I've never yeah. seen speed like that. And Ray lived in on a reservation in North Dakota. And that's all he's done his whole life. And his dad was a Golden Gloves boxer as well. But he said, I've never seen anybody with that kind of speed and mm-hmm. eye-hand coordination as Sean has. I didn't, I didn't do much. I did a couple like a couple months with him or what? Great. And yeah. then I went to, uh, I think I started kickboxing uh, with Tom, uh, Johnny. Uh-huh. That's when you started stealing wrestling match and putting them up in our garage. Yeah, Where were you stealing them from? No, Johnny had some. He gave me. He said, oh. "Do you want it?" I said, "Yeah." I don't know if that's considered stealing a wrestling mat, but <laughs> Johnny said, "I have an extra wrestling mat. Do you want it?" I said, "Yeah." So we got it up at the house. That's when, yeah, I think Cody Webster would come up. We would just, I knew like a triangle and an arm bar. And we'd just kind of grapple. like don't even know what it looked like looking back. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know anything, but yeah, I was obsessed with it, though. Oh, man, you guys were, you, you had brought up four or five other people. Seems like three or four times a week. Yeah, we were, we were I mean, training as much as I could, as much as I knew how to. Mostly sparring, though, really, just putting gloves on, head not even headgear, mouth guard and gloves, and just boxing, sparring. Mm-hmm. And I was just faster than everyone, so I didn't really get hit too much. It was just hitting everyone. Were you nervous when Sean packed up his bags and said he's going to move to AZ? Yeah. Yeah, it was an emotional day, too. Yeah. At least I was already established. Like, I had, like, what I wanted to go do. It wasn't just, like, a random going to Arizona. But then you found out he started smoking, and I bet you're like, oh, fuck. That's the last thing this little fucker needs. (laughs) Yeah. Or what he did need. We had some conversations, you and I, at the house. I remember. Yeah, I've never been really against marijuana mm-hmm. too much the younger crowd for sure um and i'm a proponent for it now as far as medicinal purposes but yeah i mean At especially from your from your perspective though the people you see that are doing those drugs in helena that's just not they're not on an upward climb no yeah no. and now heroin's eaten up with and he can talk more about it because i'm not in law enforcement anymore but heroin and fentanyl it's insane in the montana or just everywhere really everywhere but in montana yeah. i think St. Pete said they had four overdoses for 18 to 19 year olds in a 24 hour period or something. Yeah, Fuck. I was working like during that Talk time. Talk to that bad boy. We, we have we have waves of fentanyl come through, and people <sighs> will just we had called for people not breathing, like several times in a shift. <sighs> we have to rip over there and give them some Narcan real quick. What's the Narcan? real quick? What's right? Narcan? Uh, it's so it's something that uh, just makes them start breathing again. So Is since it goes a, in your mouth, or uh, you can shoot it in their nose. It's, uh, there's a nasal mustard that you can shoot it up in their nose. Oof. Does it so. just stimulate the brain in a way that I wonder what that? Is why it like that smelling work? salts like lifting mm, smelling salts? No, or? it's basically like so. The opiate is like suppress, suppressing their respiratory drive. It just shuts that down, so they quit breathing for themselves. And so we get there, and that'll basically counteract that. How fast so, do you have to get there? Within minutes? Well, if you stop breathing, you know, it's it, there's that time where they're not yeah. breathing. And so hopefully somebody starts CPR where it's keeping blood circulating through their body, you know, through their brain. 
otherwise you get brain damage pretty quick so like within five minutes of not breathing within absolutely yeah wow so helena's a scary place it's kind of depressing yeah a wave of those drugs will come through and just people will be dropping off like flies and uh they'll get on the news and they'll talk about it and tell people like hey we've got fentanyl in the valley here so watch where where you're getting stuff and people will still they'll, God, and they'll, kids see are so on, stupid. they'll see that on the news and they'll still be taking those drugs are you thinking then, are, is it like usually cocaine and they're snorting it or is it just all different sorts or of the shit? actual fentanyl that they're taking i don't think they're trying to take fentanyl i think it's stuff that's laced in the drugs that they're taking <sighs> like whether, so, whether it's fucking molly heroin ex- or whatever it is you know, so. so once you get addicted on an opiate you know pain pills and stuff you build up a tolerance, so you got to do more, and you got to do more, and you got to do more. And heroin, so morphine, when you go in for surgery and stuff and you get morphine, I don't know if you've ever had surgery or not, but you get morphine. Heroin's 50 times more potent than morphine. <sighs> Fentanyl's 100 times more potent than heroin. Oh. So now they're mixing, it's called a blue pill, and they're mixing heroin and fentanyl together. So I had it explained to me by an expert witness one day that said, when we were back in the day, when we were smoking weed at two or three percent THC, the kids today are hitting weed at thirty percent THC. Mm-hmm. So their very first introduction isn't like what we used to have, where mm-hmm. you just Chill smoke out. a little bit of weed and eat a, eat a brownie yeah. or eat a Twinkie or something. They're hitting it like a stimulant. So once they get that stimulant, they want to go to another stimulant, which is typically meth or Molly yeah. or whatever. But so their first introduction is something super heavy. So yeah. then they got to advance to the next one, but. Dude, I still think for fucking, especially young kids who don't have what they're they're going, they don't have what they're gonna do, and they don't have this work ethic and this passion yet. You start smoking weed, I feel like it's a negative thing. I always said if I started in Helena, I wouldn't have made it down down to Arizona, hundred percent. Yeah, most likely, I feel like. Yeah, would have been sure. lazy, pry. And yeah, and that's where I kind of was like, oh man, a lot of these pro athletes these good pro athletes are using it to recover. So I guess if I, as long as my habits are still good and I'm just using it to recover, then it's probably not a negative thing. Yeah. We were always good about like doing it at night, getting our work in two a days at practice and then smoking at night and earn it. Yeah. I think for someone like you too, like for you to just be able to shut that switch off for five minutes, it was big. Yeah. I remember when I told my mom, I got my green card. She said, you got two years until you're dead. She literally said that. And I was like, wow, that's, bold <laughs> that was about six years ago and uh now she just i don't know what she thinks of it still thinks she compares it to meth like actually she she told me that cigarettes were better than it i don't know where where mom gets that uh i don't know if she's had a bad experience with someone and i don't know do you know why no what, how she thinks it's so bad she literally told me cigarettes were better for me and would rather me smoke cigarettes and i'm like what? <laughs> and she was dead serious. Yeah. She's super opinionated, and she'll read an article. I don't want to talk bad about her. She'll read an article to prove her point. Yeah. But she won't read the other articles that yeah. disprove her point. So, yeah. yeah. She's, she's very opinionated. But Helena, I don't think Helena's a bad place. Like, you see the group my brother's hanging out with and the area he lives in. And, like, I think if you're around decent people, Helena's a nice place. Dude, I think. I Not think what the suicide rates say. Well, it's really? yeah. Montana. I think that's Montana in general with the sun. The sun doesn't come out a lot. I had my vitamin D check, checked and it was like 23. I think What's the normal question? range is like 30 to 60. And that was with me taking a vitamin D supplement too. Wow. And I think they, they relate a lot of the suicide rates back to lower vitamin D and lower. Just staying know, inside because it's so cold all the time. I think so. Yeah. The Rocky yeah. Mountain front, they've got a, I just took a suicide class. The Rocky Mountain front has the highest suicide, Alaska, Wyoming, Montana um, and scientifically they prove that because you live at such high elevation you have oxygen deprivation in your vein in your brain and that causes a lot of suicidal thoughts and Damn. kids that are on antidepressants and stuff Ritalin or whatever mm-hmm. they've proven that their oxygen levels lower because their elevations higher so those aren't very effective to them wow. so well and every pill they take side effect may cause suicide yeah or suicidal yeah. thoughts yeah but docs doctors give it to you they brother. went to school yeah, um, uh, Montana's ranked fourth, at least fourth in the world for suicides in the last forty years. And we have a lot of in the world in the in the in the United States. Oh. In the United States, wow. we have a lot of reservations too, and I think that's a big. There's yeah. a lot going on in the reservations. Well, and there's casino everywhere you go. I mean, there's nothing really to do. 
You uh, in Montana, it seems like you have to do the outdoor stuff, and huh. yeah, like that has Ski. to be your number one stuff. So, like, I've got a good job, and it it allows me a lot of time off to go do the outdoor stuff, like ice I've, fishing. I ice fish, um, hunt. hunt. Just spend a lot of time out in the mountains. Yeah, goats in nature. too. I've got pack goats. Yeah, those are crazy animals. But a lot of mountain biking, hiking, and like within. 10 minutes of where I work, we've got awesome mountain biking and mm-hmm. hiking and just awesome stuff to do outside so, of this city that you wouldn't have normally around like yeah. in a community like this probably. As much. So when it's like below zero and stuff, that's good time to go out and ice fish. And would you say when it's that cold, that's what you mostly do is below uh, zero, below zero. That's freezing. Uh, I bet you're staying aside with below zero, when it's below zero. It's just cold. Like it just, it it's hard to be outside because if anything goes wrong with any of your equipment that you're with, you know, like if yeah. say you're out four wheeling, and your truck goes down and it's below zero then it's dangerous. It's like, it can be dangerous you got to figure out a way to start a fire and stay warm and try to contact somebody to come get you i mean montana's the mountains it's cold <laughs> <laughs> how hard was it because my brother you have to ch- check his uh, instagram out he's got these pack goats that pack out elk meat and help him pack around shit how hard was it to train those guys to do that it actually wasn't as bad as you would think um so goats will they'll just follow you like a dog and sometimes quite a bit better than a dog. They'll just sit right behind you. So I just started taking them out and um, start hiking with them in the mountains. And they were babies at the time? They were little babies, yeah. Did you have them on leashes or they just literally follow you? Um, they just follow you. They <laughs> want to be with you. So That's awesome. now I have four 200-pound pack goats that follow me like huge Jeez. dogs. So. And you put backpacks on them, and then if you kill an animal, you can kind of piece it up and throw it on them, and they'll just keep following you? Absolutely. Damn. Yeah, they'll, <laughs> we can put like 30 pounds per goat. And so, that you know, that's 30 times. 120? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those pack goats have to be but, pretty. If you if you were to buy a trained pack goat that was ready to go, they'd have to be pretty expensive. Yeah, there's just not a lot of them for sale out there. You know? Yeah, I run into people in the mountains and they see me with pack goats, and they're like, "I didn't even know this was a thing." Mm-hmm. And I've got four big pack goats That's behind so me with sweet. saw bucks. And can they um, handle some cr- pretty crazy terrain that even like? Absolutely. If you can walk on it, they can walk on it. So damn, they're they're pretty athletic creatures. It's 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 fun, dude. I bet it's so fun. You ever plan fun. on moving down either? Are you? Are you good with the good oh, with Montana? You know, I've, I've given that a lot of thought, but the things that I love to do are in Montana. So yeah, it'd be hard for me to leave that. You know, all the things that I'm good at and that I appreciate, um, the ice fishing, the the being outdoors that's that's kind yeah, of what i'm sense. about you know you've but always I, been you and dad been super passionate about that for a while yeah i was telling and I, I think that's the way we grew up you know yeah. like when what happened to red you know i'm seven years older than you at that time and you know dad was always taking us out or taking me out and mm-hmm. hunting and fishing a lot and then when you got into high school you started doing sports a little bit more and i yep. think you got kind of got that sports team mindset and that's kind of yeah for sure that was a little bit of a change between me and you, probably. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the... Uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good fucking memories from hunt- hunting and shit. You don't do much hunting, do you, Dan? I don't. No. I don't think... We, yeah, I mean, I've never been hunting. I don't... Oh, we need to go do tricky. a vlog with Matt in the hills. Oh, gosh. Bring JX, too. Yeah. Me and you are just sitting in the truck with the heater on. <laughs> Eating snacks. <laughs> Surfing. Like, this internet sucks. <laughs> a lot of times when I'm in the mountains, it's just... I have to step back and think about what's going on i'm like this is the craziest thing i've got four pack goats packing all my stuff that are just they're hanging out with that me. is i'm crazy. like i can't believe i'm here right now this is awesome yeah it's fucking sweet what about you dad you plan on moving down ever or no yeah every time i come down here it's just that much closer to moving down here um Not i just sure. got such a good job yeah. where i'm at i work for montana association of counties now it's a super chill relaxed job pay well give me a car phone. drive around montana yeah and I get to go hang out with sheriffs and under sheriffs and guys that I worked with for 20 years. So I bet coming down and seeing the kids and the babies, though. It's tough. Matt, Matt bought um, – how many acres did you buy the at, at in of land? Um, or, just recently? Or, yeah. Uh, so we bought two and a half acres, and then we're on like a five-acre chunk right now. Two and a half so, onto the five or, or like no, same area? Like a different area. Oh. So. But I was thinking in maybe three, four, five years when I have some brown belts and black belts can run the gym without me – two months three months out of the year just go plop a mini house on his land and be able to go yeah. get out of the heat use yeah. your thirty three thousand you're gonna pay in taxes 
Yeah, and just skip the taxes. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Should I mean I need You're a tax smart. person that can help me write shit off for real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, sorry to bring that up. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sweet. I mean, living in Montana in the summer, you got like three days. It's nice out. It'd be sweet. Yeah, and then in the winter, <laughs> get bit I'll by come mosquitoes. Down there. Mm -hmm. In the winter, I'll come down here and put a mini house up. Yeah, you know, hey. for when it's real bitter cold. <sighs> yeah, nice. I don't mind the heat. Like it's getting hot out. I say that. I always feel like it's not too bad. My dad hates the heat. Damn. Yeah, yeah, it, it's hard to get to, hard to get adjusted to for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do up to about a hundred. After a hundred, that's brutal. Yeah, I just know that Stay. I. It's really nice having that plunge there, knowing <laughs> I can cool my body temperature down a lot. Just fucking like that. Right. Yeah. And everywhere's got good AC too, but it is a bitch, dude. It's hot. I think I do the plunges in Montana to help me deal with the cold. Because Ooh. I get in the ice in Montana and then I get out and what's normally cold doesn't feel as cold as the plunge. That's true. That's mm -hmm. science. That is science. Schmitty. You want to talk about Schmitty not going to work already? Or I, mean, I wish we'd have had him in here for a second to, just, just to talk to him about it. But uh, So what did he do? I literally was joking the day before he went in. He was supposed to go in on a Wednesday, and I was joking the day before. I'm like, "Oh, Schmidt, he's probably gonna call off." Like, completely thinking there's not a chance he calls off to his first day of training. I get to the apartment because that's where I game. Schmidt's there. I'm like, "What are you, what are you doing, Schmidt?" Oh, I I called yesterday and they said they didn't care. I told them my buddy's in town. I was like, "Are you, you're serious?" Yeah, <laughs> champ, I'm serious. <laughs> I was just like, holy cow. So, so, he, going, so he's like, he called them for, he had three days of training. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That are probably an hour and a half. I think there were five hour shifts. Uh -huh. But I mean, still not that. Much. So you're, hu you're hungry and grinding for a job. And uh, yeah, called in and he said, no, no, they don't care. They didn't care at all. I'm like, okay. okay. I mean, and then his mo money, mo problem, his buddy Mo. He's like, yeah, no, they didn't care. I'm like, okay, I can see where you guys form this kind of mindset. mindset. You hang out, you are, I mean. Mo was like, no, yeah, he didn't, he didn't care. So I was like, okay, he didn't care. I mean, <laughs> so right now, we love you, Schmidt. We fucking really love you, dude. But how long are you giving him to actually work this job? Um, you know, I think he will go in Monday. I don't know. I think I'm optimistic. I think he'll do fine. I how think many months? I think he'll. I mean, one. No joke. I, I don't know. I'm gonna give solid two months, Schmidt. Like I said, I love you, and you'll probably find another job. But two months, and then he's done at Sprouts. Yeah, really. Ma, I don't know. I think uh, I think once he gets in the routine, he might he might do it. He might just kind of consistently. Well, and he found a chick on Twitch that wanted to smash biscuits, and he got scared, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true too. <laughs> that's true too. Schmidt is one of those guys you cannot not like. Oh, he I is love 100%, it's 100%. 100%. Impossible to not like that. Yeah, guy. yeah. Because you just met him, yes, a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah Schmidt loves you. Yeah. Let's see where you get your humor from. I'm like, oh, that's not it. <laughs> Yeah, so. But I think he'll go in Monday. I think he'll get a good routine. But he he's also says he's waiting until summer to start working out. So I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Speaking of, IP van. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you know that browsing online using incognito mode doesn't actually protect your privacy? That's right. Without added security, you might as well give away all your private data to hackers, advertisers, your ISP, and other prying eyes. That's why I use IPVanish VPN to make it easy to stay truly private and secure on the internet. IPVanish helps you safely browse the internet by encrypting 100% of your data. This means that your private details, passwords, communications, browsing history, and more will be completely shield shielded from fa uh, falling into the wrong hands. Even your physical location will be hidden. IP Vanish makes you virtually invisible online. It's that simple. You can use IP Vanish on unlimited devices without sacrificing on speed. Your computers, tablets, phones, and even devices like your Fire Stick when you have when you are streaming media. Whether I'm at home or in public, I don't go anywhere or I don't go online anywhere anymore without using IP Vanish. IP Vanish is offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30-day money back guarantee. That's just like getting 9 months for free. IP Vanish is super easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're instantly protected. You won't even know what's on. Stop sharing with the world everything you stream, everything you search for, and everything you buy. Take your privacy back today with the brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. So go to ipvanish.com slash sugar and use promotional code sugar and claim 70% or er, and claim your 70% savings. That's ipvanish dot com slash slash sugar. That's pretty good. Thanks, man. What age did he learn to read? Six. Thirteen. Just a couple of years ago. 
Don't even act like you read ads better than me, dude. If you want, I want to see the comments. I do too. Jay, what do you think? Who reads ads better? Smoother voice, everything. Dude, you stutter and misspell and mispronounce and just skip words, and it's it's honestly embarrassing. Yeah. But well, you were raised Jehovah, it. so. You have it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. No. So. I'm, yeah. Uh, what was the most, the time you were most mad at me? Was it when uh, the, when I stopped going to the Montana Youth Challenge? When you most wanted to just beat the fuck when out. When I got kicked out of track in eighth grade. Those are the two, like, ones that stand out the most. Uh, I would definitely say the Youth Challenge one. Yeah. Just because you're like, this is this little fucker's last. Well, I, I find exactly. I wanted to drop out of school. I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to drop out, and this was an opportunity because if you go went to this youth challenge, you had to technically you had to drop out of high school. So I was like, oh, perfect! I'll drop out of high school and go to this thing, and if it works, cool. If not, I don't have to go back to school. So I went there for a month or so. How long? I don't even remember. You gotta have Jay throw up that youth challenge photo. I'll have to find it. But how long was I there for? A couple she weeks. Was, I don't know. I think you were there a month. I was a mentor to a kid at youth challenge years before Sean went, and I thought it was a really cool program. They're in the outdoors, which it is. They're learning. They're studying. It's kids that are having tough issues at home, and Sean was different than that. But this was a lot of broken families and single moms, and the kids are just going. Getting the kids that didn't trouble. do very well in high school, the high school, but right. I did a lot worse in a military-based high school than I did in a regular high school, a public high school. So, and then did, did you just work. get a call, Dan, to where it's like, hey, you got a call every time I fun. left because <laughs> you go AWOL, absent without leave. So I think you got a call every time I snuck out. Right. And where would you dip to? Subway. Try to find a couple. There's a high school nearby. They'd give me a couple bucks. Go to McDonald's. Subway. Hang out with the boys. Damn. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an hour and a half drive from Helena. So when I got the call, I was, I was flying down there, and yeah, I was probably the most pissed I've ever been. I believe that because in your mind you're like, okay, if this doesn't work, then what the fuck's gonna work? He's right. just gonna go to prison or what? Well, well and then I'm Michael getting heat from home worked. too with, you know, his mom. You know, I needed to go fix it. You need to fix it. It's mm-hmm. your fault. He turned out like that. And Michael's, tw- so Michael was probably twenty and had a couple DUIs by then. So you're probably like, oh god, another yeah. one. Michael got a DUI on Father's Day, Christmas, and my birthday. And so Christmas, he planned right? it well. Yeah, three Christmas Father's Eve. Day, yeah, Christmas and Damn. Your birthday. That's pretty sweet. Some good days to have it. Yeah, and that's I'd what's see. crazy about addiction. And you guys had talked about Michael's addiction, but it reminds me of a quick story. I I worked narcotics for a long time, so I had an informant tell me, "Would you help my friend out in Idaho?" And I talked to her, and she's cool with me saying her name and stuff, but. She said, will you help me out with this girl? She just got kidnapped by the cartel, got brought to California, got gang raped, beat up, broken jaw. Would you help her? I will order up a couple ounces of meth. You intercept her because I was more into getting people treatment than prison. That was my whole goal, and I had a lot of contacts there. So we set it up. She comes rolling into town. We have the cops pull her over, um, probably 90 pounds, all sucked up, scabs all over her face because she was doing so much dope and tied into the Mexicans. And my informant told me that she takes it and puts it up her hoo-ha. That's how a lot of girls transport it. So you don't find anything in their cars, obviously. So I rolled up. I let her know that the person she's been calling on the phone is me. I'm an undercover cop. Do you ever have to check their hoo-ha? Well, we can get into that (laughs) because she gets out and she's super mouthy. I don't have any fucking dope. I don't know what you're talking about. Her car is just a mess. We get her out of the car. That time a canine pulls up, a canine unit. Oh, God. And it's barking. And those things are aggressive. When they know it's time to go to work, they're super excited. So I told Steph, I said, we have two dogs, a passive alert dog and an aggressive alert dog. But the passive alert dog's not working tight. She's like, what does that mean? And I said, well, if we had the passive alert, he'd come out, smell dope, and just sit. And then look at his trainer and go, hey, it's right here. She's like, what does an aggressive dog, <laughs> dog do? And I said, if I let that dog out, and if you got a little bit of dope inside your seat, it'll rip right through the upholstery down to the, down wow. to the springs to get it. So you'd tear that puss right Yeah, out. she was closing <laughs> her legs. and So it's a cool story. Sends her away. She goes to prison. Um, That's the it. day That's she it. gets out of prison, I get a phone call. I switched from narcotics to property crimes. And I get a phone call, and she's like, hey, Dan, this is Stephanie. Couldn't remember who she was. She told me the story. And she said, every day I was in prison, I wanted to thank you the day I got out because you completely changed my life. Fast forward, she lives in Idaho. She got her cases all all adjudicated. She now, just last week, got promoted to the head ministry for all the Idaho Prison Bureau and Montana. So, wow. And she goes out and does drug talks. I'm gonna. She just got 
engaged so she wants me to be at her wedding so kind of a cool story that yeah and she said if i wouldn't have given her the opportunity if i'd have been a dick to her Mm -hmm. she said it would never change her mind but she knew that i i cared about hey you're like 20 years old go get your shit together so it's kind of a cool story that i mean that's pretty cool even a lot of people even go that go to prison they end up finding kind of religion through it and it helps them find something yeah but you have meaning five you could tell 500 different stories like that right where you sent someone to prison and or or uh, um, what was the other one called? Court something? Treatment court. Treatment court. Yeah, yeah stuff like that. To where uh, yeah, you could tell stories like that for days. It's getting to the point where I put a lot of people, some people in prison that were the really bad dudes, and they're about ready to get out. And I was at a grocery store the other day, and some I was wearing one of Sean's shirts, and he's like, "Hey, O'Malley, how are you doing? When did your kid fight again?" And so I talked to him for a minute, and then I heard O'Malley, and I, every time I hear that, I'm like, "Oh shit." Uh-huh. So I turn around and look, and it's a guy that you could tell had been in prison, you know, just the way they dress and the kind of way they carry themselves. And I'm like, hey, what's up? I could not think for the life of me who this guy was. And I'm like, hey, I haven't seen you around for a while trying to make small talk. And he's like, yeah, maybe like 12 years. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. And I'm like, ah, okay, I put you in prison, right? And he's like, yeah. And I said, did I treat you all right? He's like, yeah, you got me off a 10-year hit on a gun. And so that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know. At least he didn't thankful. kill you. Yeah. Super thankful. Be mad at you for putting him, putting him in prison. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Most don't. It's a cat and mouse game, you know. Mm-hmm. They they knew they were going to get caught at some point. Yeah. Well, they'd probably be dead if they weren't, if they didn't. That's what most of them say. What else we got the rest of the day? Are you doing the regionals? Yeah, I'm going to do a game here at noon. What time is it? 1130. I'll probably go game at noon. Uh, the girl's going up to roll. I got the whole mat grot, uh, matted. Dad, help me with that. It looks nice. Yeah, I'll probably go with them and hang out. You're not going to game? I want to, but I'm like, I'd rather just hang, hang out with Elena, have a little barbecue, hang out with her. Right, so I'm going to be the one gaming while everyone's at the house. Well, that's, a, that's the thing about the regionals. we got to move at time, so every Sunday I have to be home, there. And well, game. your life's rough. Exactly. So we'll probably go hang out and go game. Well, I'll probably skip it, too, then, if everyone's going up at the house to hang out. And what, what, what about that voice tone? What, what voice tone? Buddy? <laughs> you have to pay $33,000 in taxes. You're right. Don't forget about that, bud. Okay, episode uh, 183. That's about perfect, guys. Was it 183? Okay. Right, Jay? I think so, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Thanks, Dan, for coming on. See you guys next week. Peace.